Hi everyone, it's Mary Lynn from Ecstasy Crafts and welcome to our virtual class. So tonight we're going to try something a little different and it was meant to be an ask me anything. So if you have questions while we're going through tonight's uh, class, then feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try and get to them. I do have a few things that I was going to demonstrate and talk about this evening um, from questions that I received through my email. So hopefully people are going to start to join us and um, I'm going to get started. So I'm going to see last class we had a few technical difficulties, but hopefully we've sorted them out. So I'm going to just remove myself here. Okay, there we go. And hopefully everybody can hear me. Okay, so people are here, everybody's saying hi. So hi to Jennifer in June who joined us. And I see more people are coming on, so that's great. All right, so as I said, for those of you who are just joining us, feel free to put some questions in the chat as we go. I'll try and get to them. Or if you have further questions about what I'm demonstrating, go ahead and put them in the chat. And Karen just joined us, so that's great. And Karen sent some questions in, so we're gonna get started with one of her questions. So you can see the samples I have here. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate is how to create this effect. So these samples were created with the Nelly stamping dies. So I've got a few samples here. So this is the one that I used to make this example. And they are dies and stamps combined. This one comes in a circular design and it has a frame for the circle. There are other examples. I have a few samples here I can show you. So this one, when I put, I'm going to put the ink on it and then it has a die or an edge here that will then cut out the cardstock. I think once I show you, you'll get an idea of, of how they work. So this one leaves the daisy flowers or marguerites, because it's called marguerites, white, and it will color the remainder of the design. So that's how you get the white being left white. So I'm not stamp. I'm not inking it with white and putting it on purple paper. I'm inking it in purple and the white will remain when I use the stamping die. Then there's another stamping die. I'm trying to find the die itself. So this die, you can see I have a little ink when I just realized I didn't bring something to wipe my dyes off with, but that's okay. This one actually stamps, like it, it leaves openings so that you can color in the design. So this one, I'm going to bring it a little closer. I stamped in sepia ink and then I just colored in with green and yellow uh, stamping ink. So I actually just used a little paintbrush with a little water and colored it in that way. So that's the other kind. And then there is, there's several designs. So just look at stamping dies. And I thought I might show this one as well because I'm getting bad time legs. Oh, I'm sorry, Sharon. Um, this one is a rectangular slimline stamping die 
and has quite a nice pattern on it. And you get two frame dies. So you can use these as well for other uh, frames on slimline cards. So those are kind of nice designs. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to show you how they work. And then I can show you other samples and explain how you can use like embossing powders, etc. with them. So I think what I'll do is I'll ink this one. So you do need a die cutting machine, which I have here with me. And then um, I need a little scrap paper. Well, this I'm just going to use here because I'm going to cut it out of this. Now, when I ink this, I'm going to use a pigment ink. You can use a dye ink, but I think a pigment ink, it just stays wet a little longer. Now this one. You do want to just tap your ink on. I think I've actually done it a little too deep. But you can see like in here, that'll come, that'll probably go onto my paper. So you just want to tap lightly. And I'm just going to put this down. Now, once you put it down, you don't want to move it because the ink is on there already. Now you use the same sandwich as you would use for a die because it is a slimline die. Let's get my microphone cord in here. So I'm just going to run it through my machine here. So here you get your design. Now you can see the ink that I didn't wipe off because I don't have my little chamois here. Uh, I could have gone in and wiped it off and then re-inked it, but that's how it works. Basically, it debosses the ink into the paper. So you have your design. I'm going to try Somebody's asking, sir. Yeah, Nellie's stamping dies. Jennifer has a link there for people. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, maybe I'll try another one just so that you can see the difference. So this is the marguerites. So this is the one when I put ink on it, it's going to leave the marguerites or the little daisies. Sorry, people, everyone, I'm just gonna get a piece of paper here. So it's gonna leave the marguerites white. So in a way that's probably easier because you won't, it'll be harder to get the ink into the white. Well, let's try the pink again. Now I did try using a brayer and I did like using the brayer. So if anybody's having some issues getting their ink on evenly, you can try a brayer. Now you do need a some brayers are very hard. You need a little bit softer brayer, but I know the Tim Holtz brayers 
are good. I don't have one, but those are the ones I would get if I had an opportunity. I think uh, just a little bit more on this side. Now again, I'm just gonna turn it over because it will cut. So it doesn't matter that I have a little bit of extra ink on the edges. And we're gonna run this one through. Now the stamping dies, they clean off very easily with either a chamois or a microfiber cloth, whatever you might use, or a baby wipe. I know some people use baby wipes. Now, I know there are some Christmas designs as well. I know there's some reindeer and um, some circular star designs, I believe. But there you go. Now, this one, you might say, well, maybe I want to use it for something else. But once you stamp it, yes, it does cut the circle design. However, you can always cut within it. And so what I did with the same design is I was able to cut three little ovals to fit into a slimline card. So think outside the box and you can use this in another shape as long as it fits within this circle now i was hoping to bring my ruler yes i did i think this is about four inches so it would fit on let me just measure here yep four inches so it's going to fit on your a2 size cards and it would fit on a five by seven card so lots of ways you can use these. And as I said, this one is the other circular design that allows you to color it in. Now, you can actually put it through. So once you stamp it, without moving it, you could run it through your machine again with a rubber mat and you're going to get a little more depth. So the die will then deboss because you've got that little more flexibility with your rubber mat. So a few ways you can use them. And I had a few more samples here that explains how you might want to use it with some embossing powders. So these were the same one, that's the same one. So I just added a few little flowers. I embossed a little bit and added a sentiment. So this is a five by seven card. I made, this one is a circular design. So if you have a nested circle die set, you can always make a shaped card. So this is a stamping die, the darker purple, is the frame that comes with the stamping die. And then the circle card I use from one of Sue Wilson's nested circle dies with the, a stitched edge. There's a little stitched edge. So of course, when you make one of these cards, well, I might as well go through that with you as well. I don't, oh, maybe here I can explain it here. So to make this design and have an opening, you can see that I had to fold it. So I start folded and then over my folded edge, I'm gonna use a piece of card here. I would leave a gap. So you can see there. So however long you want this to be, um, just tape it over the edge. That's going to leave this folded. Then what you do 
when you put the front of your card on, put your front right on top of this design because it will overlap. And you can see that here. See how it's just overlapped a little bit? And then it just looks like a perfect circle. But when you open it, it has that little holder. So that's how I made that card. This one I showed you that I was able to cut all three of these little ovals out of this one circle. And on the inside, I also have a little heart. You see, I was able to put the little heart right over one of the marguerites. Here my first. Okay. So these are just half ones, and I'm not sure why. I think I just was trialing things. So this one, this is a white ink, I think on black. So think outside the box too. You don't have to think of everything just on white cardstock, but use different colored inks on different colors of paper. This one, I put some silver embossing powder on top right after I cut it out and ink, well inked it and then cut it out. So you can also use embossing powders. And again, if you're going to use an embossing powder, you do want to use pigment ink because then it stays wet a little bit longer. So embossing powders that I had. You can also use darker inks on darker paper I seem to have lost that sample oh no here they are okay. so this i don't know how easy it is to see a little bit but you can because the color of the card such is going to show through i thought what's it going to look like when i use dark ink so this is darker ink than the paper but again, you get a nice effect. And then this is the same colors of ink on the paper, but this has the floral design. And sometimes you might want to use these as backgrounds, right? Because then you kind of see a subtle pattern background and put something else on top or several layers. However, However you want to use it, there are different options. So hopefully that helped Karen with her stamping dies. It does take a little bit of practice, um, but otherwise they are fun to use. So I'm going to put these away. And check out all the different uh, shapes. So there are different shapes and different designs to the shapes. So there's square, oval, rectangle, the slim line, and then every day as well as uh, Christmas. Okay. So then another question was Karen, again, had several bobble dies. Now, I don't have the ones that she asked about, but her question was, how do I decorate them? Because they don't have stamps that came with them. Oh, here, uh, oh, Tony, just before we move on, Tony says you can use pigment ink to emboss instead of a clear embossing pad. Yes, you can, um, because, well, it depends on the embossing powder. However, if you use gold or silver, if you use black ink, you will get gold and silver. So in a way, 
I actually like to use the darker inks with my silver and gold embossing powder because then I know if I had a good stamped image, particularly if I'm using sentiments because sentiments, you want to make sure that people can read them. And so no, uh, using a darker ink does um, help with that. But again, it should be pigment so that it takes longer to dry. Okay. So, so another question that Karen had was how to decorate her baubles. And so I didn't have the ones that she had, but she described them. And so I thought, okay, this is a good general technique to use to decorate sort of solid designs that you have. So whether you have nested squares, nested circles, nested hearts, um, nested Christmas trees, uh, or baubles, you can decorate them in a variety of ways. So the first, what, first thing you can do is use a stamp. So use any of your stamps doesn't matter. I thought, okay, I picked a few here that I have since I'm sure people are starting to think about Christmas cards and plus baubles. I thought Christmas. So I have a couple stamps here. This is a Nelly stamp with a cottage and Christmas trees. And I thought, okay, well, this one might work because I could just stamp the Christmas trees. I know there's a little bit of shine here, but I could stamp the Christmas trees on the bauble and that would decorate it with Christmas trees. And then I could either shade around it or put it lower and put Merry Christmas at the top. There's lots of ways we could think of decorating. Or you could also choose, this is another scene so a mountain scene with another little cottage and some Christmas trees, another winter scene. So you could choose to put the little cottage there. And if you didn't want the mountain to go off the bauble, you could just mask that when you stamp the image or just let it go or move this over and just try it. So that's some options. Now think about the stamps that you have. Of course, different size baubles would require different scenes, but you may be able to choose any stamp. So I could just put a few little Christmas trees here or put this largest one in the middle. So that would work or even this side. And I have a couple stamps. Now these are older stamps, but any kind of scene I thought would be really nice. But of course you can use a background stamp. So if you have some background stamps that have a pretty design that you think might match a Christmas bauble, then you could use that. And you could use some embossing powder and make it sparkly. So that, those were some ideas. And then I also thought you could use embossing folders. Everything sort of fell just before I started here. So again, for folders, I was thinking, okay, it's kind of hard to see this. Oh, there you go. This is another 3D embossing folder from Nellie Snellen. And again, it has sort of a Christmas scene but you could put your bauble in the embossing folder and get an embossed design. You do have to be careful about the edge, but we could do a partial embossing technique where we put the design, put the design, well, where do I want it? Do I want Christmas trees and a village or just a village? Maybe we'll do that. And then all I have to do 
is make sure that my cutting plate, my embossing folder hangs off the cutting plate. So this is my edge of my, well, it's my cutting plate or my embossing plate. And just make sure my embossing folder hangs off. Then it won't emboss past this edge. So then you can do the seam. So why don't we do that now? And then we can stamp another bobble in a second. So I'm just gonna make sure it's hanging off. This is a 3D embossing folder, so I just have to adjust my machine here. And you're gonna hear some clunking. I'm just gonna emboss it one more time. I have one of the machines that you can adjust the tension or the, and so I can just get a better emboss. So there you go. And you can see, I didn't, I don't have any marks here from my embossing folder. Now what I could do is I could just sort of add a little bit of color that will highlight the embossing. I don't have much on my, I could do a little bit more. And it'll just sort of pick up the embossing so that you can just see it a little bit better. And then you could add some sparkle. And then you could actually back it with one if you wanted. And then you could even make it as a gift tag. You could use it for a lot of different things or decorate a card with it. I mean, I really like sort of the baubles, certainly if they're a little bit larger or Christmas trees, because you can make them into gift tags and you can just write on the back or you can, because these are the same, whether they're front or back, you could just back it if you, and then have a place to write your sentiment. So let's try a stamping design. This is a balloon I had too, which I thought was kind of cute. But you could do the same thing for that. Now, of course, before we do the stamping, you could also decorate it with some dies. So if you had dies that had patterns or you had small little dies that you could add to it, or sometimes you might have something that creates, I don't know, like a hatched pattern or different background dies, you could add that as well. Now, I happen to have a die set here, which is quite unique. I'm not sure it's still available, but it's really to think about how you might use it. So this die, I actually really like it. It's a string of flowers but the flowers are individually cut. So they're, although they're joined on the die, they cut individual flowers. So if I wanted to put it on a card, I would get all the little cut out flowers and there'd be white card stock in between. So I could use this one to cut some flowers if I wanted out of my bauble. I'm not sure I'd cut flowers, but you could cut flowers. Um, or if you had something else. So think about that. This too is a die with the die set that cuts, cuts a border, but it doesn't, if, as long as you don't cut the edges, Again, it, it cuts the, the images into the design. Yeah, it's hard to say. It's kind of like this. There's paper in between everything. So if you have dies like that, 
you could use those as well to decorate your bottle. Maybe I'll show you. Or if you had even a small die, maybe you wanted a little circle or something, you could cut a window and make, make it into a shaker card. I'll just show how this particular die works. So think about what you have in your stash and think how you might use it to decorate things. Oh, I don't know. So you can see it die cut my flowers, except I didn't do it as deep as I wanted it. But and then I didn't space it very well because it kind of cut a little chunk out of there. But but that's kind of the idea. Even if you had a few little dies, you could put them all on the cardstock and cut them out. So I'm thinking of little Christmas ones. I have little wee Christmas baubles, or I think I have a pair of mittens. Sue Wilson had a, a lot of little dies that came with a Christmas tree at one point. So I have some of those or stars. You could think of maybe have little stars or even a punch. Like if you have a punch that you can punch into it, you could use a punch. Okay, so that's, you could cut the flowers out red. So yes, that would be very Christmassy. And the other thing about that die is that you have the flowers to use and add to another project. So I have little white flowers or in Tony's suggestion, I could have red flowers and, and I could even add them. You could add them to not even cut them out, just add them to your bottle. All right, so we can emboss, we can stamp, we can die cut, we can use little dies to add to the add to the bobble. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is do a stamp design. I'm just going to. So this I'm going to use the Christmas tree here. So this is the hunky dory stamping press. So it has a lid and the lid has little magnets in the two corners. And there are magnets in the two corners here. So all I have to do is put it down and then press down. So here, oops, I'm just gonna move it here. There's a little plastic piece that when it sits on the stamping press, it holds the stamp up. So, so I'm going to stamp it. And then you press down on it and you can see how I press it in. So that's very helpful. So right now there's no, it's not going to touch my uh, paper, but then I can just put some pressure, pressure and press the stamp down. If I'm not happy, I can repress it or I can re-ink it, hook it back up to the magnets and it does grab it. So if you're using it, you can feel it just sort of grab it into place and then press down. So that's this stamping um, press. There is one that has the fold over lid as well, but that's currently sold out. So I'm going to use the stamp here. So this is the one with the mountain scene. We're going to need the mountain scene. I'm just going to put a piece of paper behind my Christmas tree because I'm not going to, it's, I'm not going to be very specific when I add the ink. I'm going to overlap some of it. So I just don't want to get it onto my plate. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna put my ma magnets in place, pick up my stamp, and now I can ink it. Um, trying to think, well, maybe I'm gonna use, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use sepia so that you can see it. But I actually really like sepia ink because it kind of has that antique look or, you know, distressed. It's kind of nice at Christmas. Oh, and I inked the whole stamp because I was chatting my, wasn't thinking, but I didn't have to. So now I can just press down. And I'm just going to hold this up. So you can see on my Christmas tree, I have a little cottage with a little fence. I could add some, uh, I like iced snow, which is sort of a chunky glitter, but add some, ch add some chunky glitter and then it'll be sparkly. And you have a perfect tag or a, an embellishment for a card. It's kind of nice to do an eclipse technique where you would also stamp the background. Now, the other stamp I had might work better because what you could do is stamp it across the back and then add, leave your stamp in place, then add your tree or whatever shape, but a tree sort of works for this one. And then you could add the tree directly on top. So then the tree is sort of added to the design, um, but raised. And so it just gives it kind of an interesting look. I just thought of that as I was seeing all this here. So, so there are a bunch of things you can do. So hopefully that gave you some ideas about how you can use your stamps or embossing folders to decorate items that you're sort of at a loss with, right? Because you, you've got so many things and we sometimes just get stuck uh, with thinking of only using them in one way. All right. So that was our stamp. And now, and so I kind of showed you how this stamp press worked. So the other thought I had was to show you how to create a snowbank or how to accent some of your Christmas cards. So I thought what I might do is stamp, I have, I guess I have to find it. I have a small little Christmas tree stamp. And okay, I'm just gonna move a few of my things here, my pencil. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Now, this one, I made a couple for a Facebook Live I did. Oh, here we go. And I just thought I would go through the sort of snowbank. I know. Yeah, you can see it here. So this is a stamp. It's from Harry Fairy Hugs. It's called the decorating tree. And that's what it looks like. You get little stamps to create the baubles. So I did those in red. And otherwise I stamped the tree and embossed it in a gold sparkly embossing powder. However, just to create the background, you can see I shaded a little bit here and a little bit here 
to give the effect of a snowbank. And that's quite simple to do. And another example I made here was how I made a snowbank here. And you can see these trees look like they're behind the snowbank and this one's in front. So I thought I would show you how to do that because Christmas is coming up and it's a simple technique and you can use it for all sorts of uh, techniques with st different stamps that you're, you might have. Okay. Now I need a piece. Oh, I had a piece here. Right. So you need a piece of copy paper and depending on the size of card. So I'm going to stamp a few so I can show you how to make this sort of technique where the stamp is behind and then do the shading. So I'm gonna make a five by seven card this evening. And, but you can see how you can do the same thing on a, this is an A2 or four and a quarter by five and a half. So to create my snowbank, I'm going to just tear my paper. And you can make lots of snowbanks or you can make lower ones, whatever. The idea is that you kind of have variety to the edges. Now this is a five by seven card. So I'm actually going to use my stamp press in the sort of the landscape way, sort of this way. And this is my stamp. This is a cute, so you get three different, it's hard to see, little baubles to decorate the tree with. And the tree itself, has lots of little stars and um, a little like garland that goes over the tree. It's actually a very nice stamp. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up my stamp. I'm just gonna move my card over and my tree is going to stay in the same spot. So I can just stamp this right now. And then I'm going to put my snowbank up because that's going to serve as a mask. I'm just looking for some ink here. Well, I have, this is some of our newer ink. This is from Chaubella called Chiaroscuro, I think. I don't know, I don't really speak Italian, but um, it's great. I was thinking I wanted to make some green trees. So I'm just gonna ink it with this. So again, I'm just gonna lock it in place, hold it up, and then I can put it down. It's not touching my paper yet. Make sure I'm happy with where it is. And then I'm gonna press down. Oh, I didn't, I, my stamp was sticky. It stuck to my paper, which isn't. I don't think I cleaned it after I used it. Now I may have moved my card, but I hope it's in the right spot. Okay, that's pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is move my card over. Now this is the ink I used 
is a pigment ink. So it may take a little bit to dry. Now I can move this down a little bit if I want the trees to be a little bit higher. I think I'm gonna put it here. So now I can double check and see. I think I want it higher. I think I'm going to move my snow makeup. See, you have lots of options here. Okay, now I'm going to ink my stamp again. So now you can see I stamped on the mask, but if I take that off, it's like a snowbank, or it would look like a snowbank once I add a little bit of ink. And now if I want, I'm just going to line this back up here. It doesn't, you don't have to do that. But if I wanted to get another tree and the tree to appear behind this tree, then I could do the second generation stamping. So just use the ink I have on my stamp or add a lighter color. I'm probably not gonna have much ink for it to look like too much, but I could add a gray or you could have a different color green. Yeah, see, I didn't hardly had any ink on that, but I didn't want to. Let me see, I've got a Kleenex here. I just don't want to get green ink on my other ink pen because I forgot my little chamois. But that would be, you could just use a different. pieces of tissue now but just use like a different color a lighter color well it's all right so now I have a tree that I'm going to put to the front and then two trees that are going to appear behind the snowbank so now in order to create that sort of snowbank effect, I'm just gonna move my stamping machine away. I'm gonna take my snowbank and line it up again with the tree. And then I'm going to take a blending brush and this one is from Nelly. We have some from Studio Light. And I'm going to use just, this is a Distress Oxide ink, weathered wood. But you could use any gray, and it doesn't matter. It can be pigment or uh, dyke. So now I'm just gonna lightly go over the areas above. Now, it was pigment ink. I could have dried it, which probably would have been a good idea, just so that it doesn't smudge. And you want just a little bit. You can see I added a little bit without tapping it off. And you just go upwards. Now I probably don't, well, I can do this because it'll just look like a snowbank behind this tree. And although you don't see much ink, 
when it's light uh, ink, when you take it away, you do see it. So you can see now you get the effect of a snowbank. And if we wanted, we could make it look like there's another snowbank behind. So I'll just do it again so you kind of get. And so this you do above where you want the snowbank. And you can go right over your stamping. Now this is very subtle, but you can still see it there. And it looks kind of like a mountain now in the background. Now you could decorate your trees. You could, I'm gonna just add a little bit here because you would see the, a little bit of shadowing where the trunk of the tree is. And now I could just take some glue and then add some chunky glitter or ice snow. And then you would get this sort of effect. Can you, I think you can see the sparkle there. Yeah. So that's kind of how to do snow banks. So you get that depth to your card just by using a simple mask. And it looks like the trees are behind and this is the main focus of your card. And then you can add your sentiment or whatever decoration you want for your card. This one I did, I used a little bit different bobble for the decorating this tree. I added a little die cut star I had and then added a sentiment, sending a little holiday sparkle. This is one big stamp, but another technique you can use is to, I actually stamped it because this is what it looks like all together. And then I could use my paper cutter and just cut across and then I just matted, matted it and separated. Because then you could use the sending a little for any other sentiment, sending a little love. And you could just use holiday sparkles separately. So that's a way you could get a little more out of your stamps. And then I actually decorated it with a little bobble. I stamped a little bobble in the O, it fit perfectly. So this sentiment is from Fairy Hugs as well, and it's available on the website. So that was sort of the snowbank technique. And then I thought I would show you how to use a bow maker. A bow maker, I mean, it's often that we like to use or add bows to our projects. And it's not always easy to tie the perfect bow. So this is the Hunky Dory bow maker. It comes packaged flat. You've got a base and then you have four pegs. You can make a bow that wraps around these little pegs. And I'm going to show you how to make a tiny, tiny bow. Tiny bows, I think, are really cute. And then you can make a bow up to this wide. And then I'm just going to turn it this way so you can see it. And then you can also use the bow maker to do a double bow. So I'm gonna show you that as well. However, I just noticed that I didn't have my charger in my computer. So I'm gonna grab that so that we don't all of a sudden get disconnected.
Good thing I noticed that. Sorry about my arm. Okay, we're in business again. Okay, so I have a variety of ribbon sizes. I have, this is one eighth inch ribbon. This is, I think it's five eighths inch. So just under an inch. And then this is, where did I? Oh, this is, no, that's, I think it's seven eighths inch. That would look like an inch to me. But I guess it's just shy of an inch. So I've got a few different sizes of ribbon. However, you can use ribbon up to the length or even beyond um, this width of ribbon. So quite a few options. The technique is the same. So I'm gonna start with the very tiny ribbon. And you couldn't use very thick ribbon to create a tiny bow like this. It's just not gonna work. So you need, you need to have smaller ribbon. So the technique is the same. I've got my ribbon. I'm gonna wrap it around the two pegs. I'm gonna cross it over in front of me. And then this end goes between the pegs and it comes up and I'm gonna put it over the ribbon down between the pegs and then I'm just gonna tie a knot. Now when you tie the knot, so I'm just gonna tie it there. And then you pull it tight. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it a little. Pull it tight. And I like to pull it straight out. And then I'm gonna lift it off. And as I get closer to the edge, before it comes off, I'm going to just pull it a little bit tighter. And then you have, sometimes you do have to a little adjust it, but you've got a tiny little wee bow. Whoops, this in the camera, huh? And then you can trim it. And it's perfect for your project if you have a tiny project. Okay. So that's the tiniest, about the tiniest bow you can make. Then I'm going to make a single bow with this thicker ribbon. So this is a seven eighths inch ribbon. So I have a nice big bow or uh, roll here and I'm going to do the same thing now it depends on what size of sort of little tails you want on the ribbon how much you leave I like to always have a little bit extra okay I was just doing it without telling you how I was doing it. <laughs> okay so wrap it around Cross it over top, push it through underneath. Now, if there is one side looks like a little shinier than the other, I think it's called napper, then just make sure you try and hold that um, so that you're getting it in the front, right? Because this is the front of the bow. So I've brought it in front. Then I'm going to take this to the back and tie my knot through here. And then I'm going to pull it tight and pull it straight, wiggle it. Now I can get a tighter knot because I have more space here. 
And then I would take it off and I have my bow. Now what I like to do, because you can see this is, it can, um, if I wanna have a perfect bow, I usually turn it upside down put my bow maker on top to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna take a piece of double-sided tape and just a little piece. So this is my, a little bit wider. This is nine and a half millimeters. And I'm gonna put it over the knot. And then now it's ready or it should stay that way until I add it to my project. And now you can cut the edges. I'm gonna angle it. And then I have my bow. And then I didn't bring it with me, but a tip to prevent the fraying of the edges of your ribbon, because this is, well, it's polyester, but it's called silk ribbon. No, it's not silk, it's, yeah, well, it is, no, it's not real silk ribbon, but anyway, it's polyester. But to prevent it from fraying, like you can see here, what you use is a lighter, one of the like barbecue lighters, and then you just, go gently across the edges and it melts it and then the ribbon won't fray. So that's a little tip. I always do that for my ribbon so it doesn't fray. Just hold it gently um, because you don't wanna burn it either. Sometimes it will curl and then just cut it off and redo it. Okay, you'll get the hang of it. So. We've got the two sizes here. And then what I thought I would do is show you how to do a double bow. So I'm gonna make the double bow the largest and I'm gonna use this white ribbon. I use the double bow for a wedding card that I make. I make. And you could do a double bow or a triple bow, but probably a double bow. So I'm gonna start the same way, have my ribbon behind. And instead of just starting from this, I'm going to wrap it around another time. So you have to give yourself some more ribbon. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So now you can see I have a few layers of ribbon wrapped around my pegs. So I'm gonna just tuck it through again to the back. Bring this around to the front. Bring it actually behind. I'm kind of holding it with my finger here to hold it open and then tuck it in. Hold and pull, sort of they gently tighten the knot in the center. And you can move this, so before you take it off, if it's lopsided and you've got the knot on one, more to one side than the other, then you can adjust it to the middle. And then I'm gonna just pull it off again. And now I have, well, I'm gonna do this in a minute. Take my piece of tape, put it over the knot. And now I have, now it looks like a single bow, but what I can do is I can separate the pieces so that it does look like a double bow, a little fancier bow. 
And again, I can trim my edges and then just run the barbecue lighter flame over the edges and it's going to prevent them from fray. So that's the bow maker. So it does allow you to make very pretty bows, very simply. I've had a bow maker for a long time. And every time I need to make a bow, a bow I pull it out and I'm always happy. All right, so one other question was about a die that makes a three-dimensional project and it was a chim, uh, yeah, it's a fireplace. I don't have that die to show you how to use it or to make it three-dimensional, but I thought I might talk through another way to think about how you make things dimensional or make things dimensional lie flat. It's kind of hard to, okay. So I have a, I have to find it. I have a Halloween card. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Okay. I have things all around me, so it's hard. But I thought this card would help me explain it. So this is a box card. So you can see it's like a box. And I can fold it flat to put it in the mail. And then when the recipient gets it, they can fold it out and put it on display. So this happens to be Halloween. So you can see a few of the layers here. This is a frantic stamper witch die. This is a part of a graveyard scene from Frantic Stamper as well. This is a spider web, Frantic Stamper. I think I've used mostly Frantic Stamper dies. There's also a spider and a bat, and there's a cross and skull bones and what else is with that? I think a cat. This cat that I have in the corner here is from Sue Wilson. It was a die that was with a window set that she had a couple years ago. So you can put a whole bunch of things together. The die it, itself, so to make the box was a Marianne die. I'm not sure, I meant to check it before I left or before I left, before I started the class to make to see if it was still available. But what I wanted to go through was how you kind of create this technique where you can fold things flat. So the way the die works for Marianne, I think there might be still some I'll try and put it in there in the description of the video that goes up on YouTube. Basically, the die cuts the background piece and it has an area in the die that creates the fold. So you can see it's a little serrated here. So that allows you to fold it in. And then you cut another one for the front. Now it comes with this die to create the window opening, but the die itself is the same. You just add the window to it. It also then of course 
past the edge or that it creates that uh, score line. And then what you do, I usually just put double-sided tape on these edges and then I can hold it like this and tape it together. So that's kind of how you would create a box and then it just will fold over to lay flat, which is the nice thing about cards if you want to make them dimensional, but you want them to go through the mail without uh, paying significant shipping fees or mailing fees. So how might you do this without a die? So if you think what, I've got my scoreboard here my big scoreboard. So I'm just going to go through it before I bring it up. So it really is about having this hinge. Think of this as a hinge. So you can either make it fold flat or you can make it fold over like this. So I could do this the other way. doesn't really matter. Um, it will go both ways. And then with this die, you actually get a strip. I'm going to put it here upside down. You get a little strip. Let's see. See, it's about a half an inch. So it's this little white piece here. And it also has a folded edge. So I can just glue that into my box part and then it follows the box when I fold it. So that's how to build the layers to give you the depth because this is well half an inch from the back but because of the hinge it also folds as we fold the card over. So how can you create your own hinges? You can use strips of paper and your scoreboard and create a little hinge. So I'm just going to move these over. Grab my scoreboard here. Now I have just little strips. And you would need to cut them to the size you want and so that's how tall they need to be for the card and how wide you want them so i tend to use strips if i'm making a design something like that where i just want to add like a window to the top that's just three quarter inches total and then i would score at an uh, I know what's this this is oh this is centimeters so it's half a centimeter so for one particular design I make I just don't have one made to show you I do just a little strip and then I would tape this to my card and then I could put something on top to fold over. And that could be a window design like this. And then maybe I wouldn't have, well, I usually don't use it. I just have a little, um, little window. This is an inch. This is an inch wide here for this box. But the other one designs I have, I just use uh, not even half an inch, but you could do this and then place it on your card like here. Say I wanted a little window over here. I could place this down and then I create my window kind of the same way. So let me, so this would be my window 
which would be a piece of cardstock with sort of an opening like this. It just doesn't have the same shape as this. It could have any shape I wanted. And then if I had my little piece like this here, I could put my other piece, this is a little wide, but it needs to be able to fit. So this you can see is wide. So technically it should go down here. So I would cut a little piece off. And then I could just put some tape on the back here before I attach this piece to my card. And then I could attach this layer over here, or just like this piece. I'm just showing something. And then I have my window here and I would do the same on the other side. It does take a little bit of planning because you need to make sure that this distance between these little hinges is going to fit the, hinge, the um, length between the hinges on the front. So I usually, I have a template when I make a card like this and I know exactly, so say I, this was my template. It's just a piece of paper and I would draw a pencil line in between. So it's equidistant on the outside edge, pencil line here, pencil line here. And then I can put my little hinge along the pencil line. You won't see it. I try and put it right on top and then the same thing on this side, and then you would put this on top. Usually what I do is I do one side at a time. So I have my tape, my double-sided tape here. You don't need to fill this edge with double-sided tape. You could do a couple strips. And then I take my design, my front, I've already filled this piece. So I would have this extra layer already glued in here. And so it's gonna be sitting up anyway. And I would decorate the whole background. So in this example, I have an extra tree here. It's a die cut. I have a moon. I stamp some um, bats and there's actually another tree layer. And now this is a Christmas tree layer. It's an older die, but there's similar dies around now. And I just did it out of black. So I've decorated everything. So it's easy to do that part of it because it's all open for you. Then I usually decorate part of the front. I may not, I wouldn't put the witch on or the cat, but I would decorate this because this is behind my front here. And I could add the bat and the spider um, when it's all together. And the front, I don't know if you can see it here, but I embossed it with a spider web too. That's an uh, uh, embossing folder. I'm not sure it's available anymore, but it was from Lee, Leanne Creative. And this one you can see has stars. So you can also emboss anything you put on the front with an embossing folder if you have one that matches the theme. So I would peel off my tape and then sort of line up the hinge and then press it down. And then I would usually put this on the inside peel off my tape, make sure the hinge or folded piece lines up and then press it down to seal the tape. And when I make the inside part of the box, I usually use glue to add the inner layer because it gives me some wiggle room. 
And when I have it like this, when I put the glue here, I fold it over so that it works smoothly. It will then adjust itself for so that the glue holds in the correct space so that when you fold it, it's nice and flat. So I know that was kind of, I would have liked to have had some time to have everything together so I could have made it for you. So it might explain a little bit easier, but that's kind of how you have to think about to try and make things go flat. You need little hinges. Some designs don't lend themselves to that. And, and you make like little boxes that then sit on top of your card. Yeah. So that, um, it was all about a fireplace. I think the fireplace itself might be able to fold flat, but I don't think there's a uh, sort of, what am I thinking, a um, hearth on the fireplace. I don't think that's going to fold flat. So it just depends. Maybe you choose not to use that or you make a hearth. Um, Folding it, I'm trying to think if I wanted it to go flat. Because you want it to stick out. Yeah, I think you kind of have to, I don't think that's going to work. Or it would just have to be a single layer. It could be like this kind of thing. And then it might be able to tuck under. You might not be able to use the die set that goes with it. Okay, so does anybody have any questions that I can try and answer for you who's joined us this evening? We'll open it up for people if they happen to have any questions. I'll give you a few minutes to think of some. Um, I'm trying to think about that was kind of I wasn't sure how much time I would have to show different things, depending on how many questions people have. So I'm open for more questions. Otherwise, we might just end the class early. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining me. I hope you learned a few things this evening. Um, we'll try and have sort of question and answer sessions, you know, every now and again, if people find that helpful. Um, otherwise, I don't have anything prepared for the next class. So there won't be one in two weeks. There's so many things going on that I haven't had a chance to make a sample for the class. I've been making samples for a lot of other um, sort of events and I haven't just made any for the class. So hopefully something will be coming up in the next little bit if I have a chance to get a class together. And then we'll aim for probably a month from now. That's my goal is to have something in about a month. And that will give me a few weeks to get the card together and then advertise it. So if there's items you wish to purchase to follow along with the class, you'll have a chance to get them. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to do that. And I'm thinking people probably want maybe Halloween, maybe Christmas, but we do have Halloween and Thanksgiving coming before. So Tony's asking, do you work with Alcohol Inc? Yes, we could do something with Alcohol Inc. Um, I could, we could 
try something like that. I'll just, I know we had one at our open house. We could always put that one on or have a variation of something like that and maybe just play a little bit more with alcohol inks. Okay, thanks for that suggestion, Tony. And if we don't have it for the next class, that's something we can think about coming up. But that definitely would work. I'm thinking colors for fall, right? So there are some pretty alcohol inks that might work for fall. And Tony says she'd like to know a little more about that, so. Okay, well, I'll definitely think about that. Um, any other suggestions? You can always email me, um, Mary Lynn. I don't know if I have my email up. Let me see if I have a banner I can put up. Okay, there you go. So my email, Mary Lynn at ecstasycrafts.com. And if you put, I have class question, that was for this week, that's fine. If you could put that in the subject heading, then I can search through all my emails and I'll look up the, or I'll be able to see that that's specifically to the class. Or you can um, just put virtual class. But since I have this banner up, class questions good. And then I can uh, check on those before I put together the next class. All right. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you everybody for joining me. And I hope you have a good month and hope to see you in about four weeks. And maybe by the end of next week, I'll have a project together for the class or soon after that. At least I should know the technique we might try, okay? So have a great week. Thanks for joining us and see you soon. Bye for now.